not planning on filming today and then I saw a comment this morning as soon as I woke up from Jessica on my Morley Gray character video and she asked for a like beginner's guide to dark romance video because she wants to jump in but she's not sure where to start. And I understand that is scary. Jumping into dark romance, you could jump in like real, real in the deep end when you are not just prepared for that. So put together a list similar to how I did my taboo romance recommendation video. I did that like level one, you're like dipping your toe into the water of taboo all the way to full on drown in the deep end. Well, that's what we're gonna do with dark romance today as well. So I have five different levels that I'm gonna go through as we go throughout this video. Starting like super light, like you are just barely getting elements of dark romance in it because I really wanted to make sure that I'm not already like sending people full on in in level one. Because here's the thing, I read a lot of dark romance. So what I may think is like lighter, When she gets really wild, she tries to like climb the door frame. Anyway, so what I may think is like a lighter dark romance, some other people might be like, oh, hold up here. So I did consult my sudden besties and make sure that I was not maybe like giving too dark too early. Also, before I jump into any of the picks, I do just wanna say that obviously with any level of dark romance, please always make sure that you're looking up trigger warnings for any of these books. Everyone knows their triggers best, so make sure that you are always doing your research, you're taking care of yourself before you're jumping into books. So what I have, with these two recommendations for level one is I would not classify these two books as dark romance. I would not put them under that umbrella. However, they do have darker themes or like a darker theme to them that they are not overall dark in content, but they do contain darker storylines to them. So I would say they're like mostly light with just like a few darker elements, maybe like some trauma for the characters. So the first book is Voyeur by Fiona Cole. So this book, again, I would say this is just like a contemporary romance. I would not classify it as dark. However, our hero Callum does have uh, a darker backstory and some trauma that he's working through throughout this book. So if you really have never read dark romance before and you like only read like fluffier contemporaries and you're just trying to maybe get like the slightest taste of a little bit of a darker edge to a book, this I think would be like a decent starting place. So this one follows Callum and Oak Oakland and Oakland is a college student. Her parents have spent all of her tuition money. She's in need of money. So one of her friends is like, hey, my uncle owns this club, Voyeur. Why don't you get a job there? It's a sex club, but it's not like the audience doesn't like participate. It's more like you go there and you see like performers, you know, kind of deal. And Oakland becomes a performer there and Callum ends up seeing her and is kind of like interested. But then when classes start uh, the first day, he realizes that Oakland is actually his student and they do start working together too throughout it. So there's like that extra element involved to it. So like I said, overall, this is not a dark romance. However, Callum does have um, some history of abuse in his past that he really has to work through and that he and Oakland work through together. So it does have like a little bit of that darker edge to it, but overall the tone of this book is not dark as a whole, I don't think. So again, like if you really have not explored dark romance and you just need a tiny, tiny taste of it, I'd say like this is like that bit of the darker edge. And then the other one that I put here is Stay With Me by Nicole Fiorina. So this is the first book in a trilogy. It follows the same couple all the way through. And this one follows Mia and Ollie. And Mia is a bit of a troubled woman. So she, I think is she 18 or 19? And like her dad and stepmom are just at their wits end with her. She's been getting into a lot of trouble. And I believe she is, they think she's a sociopath. Like she doesn't feel emotion. She doesn't feel like remorse for her actions or anything. So they send her off to this mental health kind of like campus facility type place. It's not like a hospital, but it's like, I don't even know how to describe. It's like a school kind of, but like, not like everyone there is like troubled teens kind of deal and there she meets Ollie and he is kind of like the opposite it's like a little bit like grumpy sunshine but he's more of the sunshine she's more of the grumpy and yeah so again this one I would not classify as dark it does have a darker edge to it I'd say then voyeur even there are some things that Mia sees that happens to like other people that do range on the side of darker but between her and Ollie like there's not really any like dark themes that you like are really gonna get into in the other books that we'll talk about. But I would say this one, so like it's mostly contemporary, but again, has that darker edge to it where you're not like dark romance, 
but you're like not fluffy contemporary either. It's kind of like riding that line. Okay, next up level two. So more overall darkness in tone with these ones. I would actually consider all of these dark romance. Like this is where I feel like I would put that label on it. Like this is a dark romance. More bully elements, more morally grayness to the characters overall, that kind of deal. So first up we got Corrupt by Penelope Douglas, the first book in the Devil's Night series. I actually gave my friend this book when she was just starting out to read romance and I think that was a mistake because I think I scared her off. So like I said, maybe I should have started her out with one of the other two and then jumped her into this. It follows Michael and Rika and it definitely has more bully elements, very like enemies to lovers. Michael does some like kind of fucked up things to Rika <laughs> and like his friends do. It's like focused on like revenge kind of. So Michael is one of the four horsemen, him and his three best friends uh, back in high school, they were known as the four horsemen and every year on Devil's Night, they would just like wreak havoc around this town. One year something goes wrong and they three of them are sent to jail and then years later now when those three are out they want to take revenge on Rika because they think that she had a part in them going to prison and Rika is currently dating Michael's younger brother but she has always had a thing for Michael. This one very strong elements of like bully between Michael and Rika. Definitely more like toxic energy we're getting with them. Um, a little bit more taboo. There is like a scene with Michael, Rika, and one of Michael's friends later on in the book that I personally loved. But yeah, it's definitely like more on the taboo edge, which I think like taboo and dark romance do sometimes tend to go hand in hand. There is that and overall I would say the series as a whole is just like it does lean very more like dark romance. Next up we got A Standalone Too Late by Colleen Hoover. Now you may say Colleen Hoover dark romance? Yeah she's got a dark romance. This one follows Asa, Carter, and Sloane and Sloane is a college student and she is dating Asa and lives in a home with him. There are a few reasons why she's dating Asa. I don't really want to get into spoilers but she's kind of in the position where she feels like she can't leave him and but it's like pretty toxic she's like not happy with him he is a drug dealer there are like always people over at their house and like partying and she just she's not comfortable living there but she doesn't really have an option and when she starts going to classes uh she meets carter who is a guy in her spanish class and they kind of like hit it off a little bit but obviously sloan is like not looking to leave asa but then Carter starts coming around with Asa because he starts working with Asa in like his drug ring kind of business. This one I can't lean too much more into because of spoilers, but there is like some stalking. There's like a lot of toxicity between Asa and Sloane. I don't know. I don't really know how to say this without giving away spoilers. Let's just say Asa, he has like a dangerous edge to him, okay? And I don't really want to say anymore. I originally had this one at level one and then I was like, no, you really should put that at level two. And that's truly by Carmel Rhodes. So this one, again, it's classified as dark. Me personally, I don't think it's dark except for this one interaction, this one scene that happens between our hero and heroine. So this one follows Truly and Noah. And Truly is graduating from high school and her boyfriend breaks up with her before they head off to college. And one night at a graduation party, she runs into his older brother, Noah. And they have an interaction at this party that this is the dark element of this book that it goes from like dub con to like non con kind of territory. Definitely like any dub con non con leans into darker romance territory. And that's why like if this was more throughout the whole book, I would have put this one higher up in the levels. But the rest of this book is very much just like coming of age kind of story. Once that like is out of the way, and her and Noah are actually together, it's like not dark he's just like kind of possessive and like an asshole but he's not necessarily i don't think like dark like there's no on page like graphic violence like we're gonna get into they're not like killing people they're not in the mafia they're like going on a college road trip so it is very coming of age but there is that one scene in particular that uh, you get it like right off the bat pretty much that is the dark tone setting for this story but yeah i would say this one like just be careful on when you're going into dark romance just because even though I feel like Devil's Night as a whole is like darker, there's nothing that ever happens between Michael and Rika that is as extreme as what happens between Truly and Noah at the beginning of this book, even though they like come around by the end of it. But just be aware of that going into this one that Noah is not like an easily likable hero. Okay, next up, level three. Did this, oh yeah, because I pushed one of these back again too. I think I more like pushed all of them back a ranking when I was like concerned that maybe they were a little darker. So first up though, so with level three, this one I'm going like there's on screen debt or on screen, 
on page death slash torture, a little more violence, a little more trauma in the backstories and like a little more heavily discussed. So the first up we have The Risk by S.T. Abbey. This is the first book in the Mindfuck series and this one follows Lana and Logan and Lana is a serial killer and she has a list of men that she is tracking down and killing and one day she's at a coffee shop like complete accident she runs into this guy Logan and they kind of like connect a little bit and it turns out that Logan is an FBI profiler and he is trying to catch Lana but he does not know that he is trying to catch Lana he is profiling this case of murders and Lana when she learns that he's profiling her case then she is aware that he's looking for her but he does not know that the woman that he is dating is also the woman that he is trying to catch. It's so freaking good. But this is why I put this one at level three, because obviously Lana's a serial killer. You're going to see on page violence. You're going to see blood. I don't think it's like particularly excessively gory in any ways, but you know, like there is on page, like she's literally killing people. So, but I support women's wrongs. I support you, Lana. Lana's backstory is dark and her reasons for doing these things are dark. Uh, it's not as heavily discussed in the first book. It does take like, maybe is it in the second or third one uh, where like you get into that a little bit more, but that's why I put this one at level three because definitely like more triggers are added onto this one. Next up for level three, I have Carnage by Sarah Bailey. So this one is a reverse harem. So it's a little bit more taboo, but this one follows Scarlett, Prescott, Drake, West, and Francis. So uh, years back when they were like children, the four guys, the four horsemen, they've always run together and they used to have a fifth, which was Scarlet. And when she was like 16 though, there was an accident. We don't know what that is yet. I'm on book three and I think I'm just starting to maybe find that out. But there was an accident, she loses her memory, she's taken away, whatever. Years down the line now, these four horsemen are super powerful billionaire men. Like everyone is like peasants at their feet and they hire Scarlet as their assistant. They are aware of who Scarlet is, but Scarlet has no memory of them, does not know that she knows them from her childhood. And her parents, her parents are garbage too. And they send her in as like an undercover person, to like take them down. Why they want to take them down, we don't know again. We don't know any of that. There's lots of revenge plots between the opposite parties. There's uh, again, more of like a dub con element to it. I will say there are some times when Scarlet is not in like her full headspace if you know what I mean, if you can catch my drift here. And also there is some like on-page violence. I think like these guys are not afraid to get their hands dirty. They're not like mafia men, but they're not afraid of getting their hands dirty when needed. Okay, and lastly, I have The Game by LP Lovell and Stevie J. Cole. So this one is a collection of novellas, but they're all like wrapped up in the game. And I think this is maybe then like 300 pages, like it's short. This one follows Ella, Tobias, and Preston. So Ella, she's like recently broken up with her her boyfriend or fiance or something she has like no place to live no job no money like needs needs a job really bad and she gets this interview with this billionaire and she goes to it and when she gets there she realizes that this job is not like a traditional job like she was thinking instead Tobias and Preston give her an offer for one million dollars she gives up a week of her life to them and she can't ask questions there's a set of rules that she has to follow always obey and by the end of the week the end of the seven days she will get a million dollars and she's kind of like oh this is sketchy but she doesn't really have any choice and she ends up taking it taking them up on it and this game ensues the reason that this one would be a level three is there is like a lot of mental manipulation so i don't necessarily think it's like anything super like pitch black like we're gonna get into but the mental like mind fuck there is present in this as well as like some on-page violence uh she is like ella a lot of times throughout this has to make like moral decisions kind of like you know those dilemmas of like if you could like divert the train track from killing like one person to save like 50 like would you do that if you have the power to like pull the lever lever kind of like mental manipulations like that uh, it's kind of taboo because it's like the three of them and like the whole kind of premise is like a little more taboo um and also like she can't say no now number four again i bumped another one back and added this one so level four i didn't really have any like qualifiers how i had with some of the other ones it was more like these books they're darker than the ones on level three but they're not pitch black like level five they kind of fall in that middle some of these are actually like some of my favorites on here 
So first up that I want to talk about is Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. This is a standalone rom romance. So this one follows Cora and Dean and they have been enemies for years. They don't like each other and Dean is dating Cora's sister and they are out at a bar one night celebrating a birthday and everyone else leaves but Cora decides to stick around for a while. Later when she wants to leave she can't find a ride home. She reluctantly calls Dean and Dean comes to pick her up and on their way home they are kidnapped by a serial killer and taken hostage into a basement. And this is where things get really dark. This serial killer has like a sick fascination with making people like fall in love that are like in his basement. So the things not only that he does to Cora, but then that he makes Cora and Dean do to each other. It's, it's dark. It's heavy. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this basement. However, the reason why this one is not pitch black for me is that in the latter half of the book, there's a lot of healing. Obviously the trauma that these two go through is absolutely horrible. It seems bleak at times, but then once you get to like the healing and the journey of them afterwards, they are just true soulmates. And that throughout this whole thing, even though they were in captivity together, they always had that hope of the other person and like that comfort of the other person. So that's why I don't think it ever went like pitch black. It's dark. You need a flashlight. This is one of my favorites on this list. I love this book so much. Next up, we got a duet. I've already talked about this duet quite a bit, but it's because I love it. And that is The Cat and Mouse Duet by H.G. Carlton. So it's Haunting and Hunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton. So the first book, you have to read them in order. The first one is Haunting Adeline, and this one is a stalker romance. So Adeline's grandmother dies and she inherits like her manor. So she goes out, this manor is kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of like gothic-y vibes. And she's a writer, so she's out there writing, doing her thing, living her life. And she starts to notice a man outside of her windows. And she's like, what is this dude's deal? And it starts from him just kind of like watching her to getting closer and closer and closer until he's like in her house, you know? And that man is Zayd and Zayd is a literal stalker. And he does not take no for an answer. So this one is definitely dark. Here's the reason why I put this duet at level four is because book one, haunting Adeline. I feel like this is more of a level three. There is some dub con in here. There is some like knife action, you know, and like a little bit more like violency kind of stuff, but it's not, I don't feel like is that insanely dark, but then haunting Adeline is dark, dark, dark. Like I would almost put haunt, hunting Adeline around like a five. Then I feel like if you take a three and a five, you make a four, this one falls in level four for me. You just got a lot of like the dark romance, the classic like dark romance things in this duet. And last one on level four, I bumped this one back too because I had second thoughts about it and I was like, maybe it is more of a four and I'm just like desensitized. But that is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. So this one is like a very loose Peter Pan inspired kind of book. So this one follows Hook and Wendy and Hook is a crime boss. It is like contemporary, it's not fantasy. But Hook is a crime boss and he hates Peter. And in order to get to Peter, he's like, you know, I know his weakness, his daughter, Wendy. So he goes after Wendy and they start a relationship. She's not aware of Hook's rivalry with her father. And then when she finds that out, uh, Hook does not necessarily like let her go. You know, that's why then I ended up bumping it up because it's not like kidnapping, but also like he doesn't let her leave. And there is some on-page violence, like some graphic uh, violence and like blood and stuff. And I don't know, I feel like this, like it's mafia-esque. I would consider mafia more being around like level two, level three most of the time. But I would say like the violence and just like overall kind of tone of this book is pretty dark. I didn't include any mafia books on this list. I just haven't really been in a mafia mood and there wasn't one that I like really felt like talking about or that I really truly felt like fit in with all these other ones because I almost feel like it's its own genre in dark romance. Like mafia is just like its own kind of beast. So I do wanna do like a whole mafia video at some point, but for right now, I don't know. I feel like this is the most mafia-esque that you're gonna get on this list. And lastly, we're at level five. We're talking like pitch black kind of deal here. And so what I considered to be level five was again like I could have included like some taboo ones in here but I didn't because I already did that taboo ranking kind of video so I feel like if you want like the most extreme taboo that like also leans kind of dark you can go check out that video this one what I would say is the darkest that I have personally read are ones where it's like kidnapping trafficking kind of deals here. So I have three. So the first one we're starting off with is my favorite on this level five, Enthralled by Gianna Darling. So this is the first book in the Enslaved duet and it follows the same couple in both books. So this one follows Cosima and Alexander. And when Cosima turns 18, her father owes 
some money to some important people and he's not able to pay off their debt. So instead he offers up Cosima for marriage to Count Alexander to kind of help forgive their debts. And she is very, very obviously very reluctant to go to this man who like bought her. And the only reason she goes is because she loves her mother and her sisters. And she's like, I'll protect them by doing this. And there is a deal woven in here that like, if he, if she's with him for like five years or something. So she's kind of like, I can get through this. And when she shows up, she realizes what she was bought for by Alexander. And it was not to like necessarily be his wife, if you know what I mean. There are some like pretty dark shit. There's a lot of Dubcon in here leaning into maybe like a little bit more like non-con territory at certain times. So definitely darker with that. The like games that the society kind of plays with women is like, mm, is questionable. And just overall, this is just like dark through and through. But there is a light with Cosima and Alexander. They do end up like creating a bond and like falling in love. But just the circumstances surrounding them and everything else in this book are dark. Cosima and Alexander, I like actually truly believe their connection. Where, let's get into Tears of Tess by Pepper Winters. So Pepper Winters in general, everything that I've read from her so far has been very, very dark. Tears of Tess, this is like a trafficking romance. So Tess is on spring break with her boyfriend and when they are off, they're like on a motorcycle and they end up at this one like random kind of like little bar type place off the coast of somewhere and when they're there immediately Tess gets like bad vibes she's like we should not stop here we should keep going but of course her stupid boyfriend is like oh no we're fine it's okay let's just like it's fine let's just stop in for a drink quick and Tess is like literally no and it's like listen to women women have intuition about places okay because we have always had to fear everyone and everything okay so I'm like you should have listened to her and he, and he did not and she ends up getting taken and is trafficked so then she ends up with Q at this manor she sold to him and when she ends up there she's like she's very obviously reluctant to her surroundings and obviously wants to get home and kind of does whatever she can to get home. This one is extremely dark. What happens with Q when she first gets to his house and like certain things that happen there are dark. And then even like, this is the thing, it's like the tease of the escape, only to realize that like other people are even more shitty than Q are. And it's things like, just so many things happen to Tess throughout the course of this story that it is just like pretty much dark from start to finish. And then the last one that I have on this list, this is like pitch black and I didn't even finish. And I've like heard that the life of Anna is like the darkest thing that you'll ever read. And I only made it through the first book and that is Enslaved by Marissa Honeycutt. So again, this one isn't necessarily like trafficking like she's born into it kind of like as weird as that sounds i forget how old she is but her parents either die or they like sell her they're like not in the picture but she has this uncle that is kind of looking out for her that kind of tricks her into thinking that she's safe with him and she's not and she ends up being turned into a slave and is like trained to please whoever wants to have her company. Just the absolute like breaking down of who she is as a person to then like become this kind of like robot. The things that people do who like manipulate her and they think that they try to get her to like trust them and then she does and then they just like completely fuck her over. It's like, it's dark, it's a lot, it's heavy. The thing like just it, it really was to me more just like, like there wasn't a light in this book whatsoever. There wasn't like a character where I was like, oh, I think you're gonna like genuinely help her out. It was just all kind of like, I don't think she can trust anyone and she is kind of on an island of her own. And that's why I think this one, I would say is like darkest of the dark because even in like enthralled, where like dark things are happening, Cosima and Alexander, like at the end of the day, you know that like, he genuinely loves her and is going to protect her at the end of the day. Where Anna, I don't think anyone's looking out for her. 
no one's looking out for her. It's very dark. I didn't even finish the rest of the series. It's five books and it's like super long. Like this first one is not long. It's maybe like 250, 300 pages, but like the series as a whole gets really long. And I'm like, I just, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do it. It's just so, it's so dark. Feel free to ever like DM me if you're like, hey, I'm looking for like a certain darker romance, but like I have these triggers, feel free to DM me. I will, I'm glad to like talk, recommend books, kind of like give you warnings of what's gonna be included if that's what you need. So you can follow me on Instagram, DM me on there. I'm happy to talk about dark romances. Obviously it's like probably my favorite subgenre of romance, but besides like taboo, which I feel like taboo also like fits in dark. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that like my rankings, made sense. You found some wrecks. That's it for today and I will see you when I see ya.